What's going on? What's going on? Hope everybody's enjoying their day. I know everybody's getting their day started. So let me go ahead and get started with y'all. Let's go ahead and get started with y'all. Thursday nights. You know the best thing about Thursday nights? NBA, NBA on TNT. I try not to talk about other programs and, and everything, but NBA on TNT. We all know what games that we was watching on Thursdays. You know, love watching some, love watching inside the NBA and and just it's everything about TNT with basketball. It's just great. You know the the commentators are awesome. The the sports analysts they're awesome. Inside the NBA, the 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 TNT boys are awesome. Everything about it is awesome. And usually they'll have some really good games on. Some really good games. And it was real enjoyable watching the, the Lakers and the Mavs. And I ain't gonna lie, in the beginning, I really didn't want to sit sit down and watch that whole game. I ain't I really didn't want to, man. It's just it, it's just I just didn't have an interest. But for the for me to try to be as professional as I can, trying trying to do this podcast, I said, you know what? I'm gonna sit down and watch this game. And in the f- first half, first and maybe the, the third quarter, it went exactly how I thought it was gonna go. The match was up by 19 points, and the Lakers was just don't don't having a shit show of of shooting. Can't shoot if if their careers depend on it, and some of them their careers do depend on it. Like horrible shooting, like, and I don't know what's up with them in the in in the threes. They love shooting threes when they don't make it. They they just love it. They would shoot for like twenty something threes, make like five of them, and then be like, "We're gonna shoot, we're gonna shoot um the twenty second three or the twenty third three. One of these threes is gonna be three number three number six. One of these threes, like." Of a lot of so many of of Laker games that I watch was like that. Y'all can't shoot. Y'all can't shoot, and y'all got up to February 9th to make trades so y'all can get shooters on y'all team. It is, it is January 12th, and y'all ain't make a move yet. Y'all ain't make a move yet. Y'all ain't even tried to make a move. I don't, even, I don't even see nobody on your team on the trade block. You know, so they th- having this shit show of a shooting game and it, it you know, it hurt them. And then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, the, they start making that magical run. They start make, making that magical run. And Dallas started playing exactly what I figured Dallas is, which is why I'm saying they they can't be elite teams, and they and they they will be interested in the playoffs, but I don't expect them to go far. And the reason why, because for, for that team is Luca and or nothing, Luca or nothing, you know, and it's, you just can't win like that. We seen that. We saw that with the 76ers when they had Allen Iverson. We saw that when they on the Atlanta Magic when they had Tracy McGrady. We saw that on the Houston Rockets when they had James Harden. You can't win when one player got to do everything. He got to shoot. He got to pass. He got to rebound. He got to play defense. He got to get the crowd hype. He got to do. Everything, the straight, the heartbeat of that mass team. And then if he's doing one thing not 100%, they will lose the games. The game, by, I would say by the fifth minute of the fourth quarter, the game got interesting. Like, like you're in the edge of your seat. That's basically when, when Luka st- stopped. Making shots. He he basically stopped making shots around the five minute mark of the fourth quarter. That's basically that's basically when he just offensively he was he just wasn't there. He was he was there as a playmaker. 
he was there defensively a little bit, but offensively he wasn't there until until the until they really really needed it. This man made two clutch threes, one in regulation and one in overtime. Like, like the the man is just amazing, man. There's not much I can say about that, man. He just he just in a, a an amazing player, and this team go as far as far as Luca goes. That's the truth. I will say this though, that shows that shows some respect when it's due. Cause Spencer Dinwiddie was on fire today. On fire. Go ahead, Spencer. He must have. He must have got tired of, of hearing, "Is Luca nobody?" And he wouldn't say, "Hey, I'm here too. I'm here too." And he was on fire. Christian Woods, another one, on fire. Playing like a true big man for Dallas. Crashing the boards, you know, just putting up twenty four points, like the game, man. It was it was a it was a real good game, real good game. And even though Luca basically stopped scoring for basically like the the last five minutes of the fourth quarter, he still ended up with thirty five points. We need, like. What could, what, what, could, what could you say about him? What could you say about him? Nothing you could say about him. Great player. Awesome player. If his team would, 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 wouldn't lose so many times, he'll be in the MVP con, con, um, conversation. But he's not in the MVP conversation because the Max lose too damn much. And they lose against teams that are that seem like they are an upper level than them. Because... This game between the Lakers went to two overtimes, and the Lakers is not supposed to be on the same level as them. And yet, the Lakers is playing with them like they are on the same level. You know, overall the game, the game, the, it was it was a good game overall, and it was so physical. Man, I feel I feel like I was watching a boxing match today, or a, a, a hockey match, I should say. The way the way what Russell Westbrook kept shoulder blocking Luca, he did it twice. He did it twice. Like the first one, what became a flagrant foul. The second one, they they just said they just let it roll, let it roll off their shoulders, which is kind of crazy. If if you will get the first one to be a flagrant, the second one gotta be a, a flagrant too. But they decided to let that let that one go, and the game did, didn't did not even have to go to a, a second overtime if Luca would just make the free throws, like. You got a flagrant foul because because the guy shoulder blocked you. You got two free throws. You know those those two free throws would have would have iced the game. How you miss both of them? And by the way, Max, don't you have Tim Hardaway Jr. on your on your team? Isn't he like your best free throw shooter? Why is Lucas shooting a free throw anyway? Because he got fouled. You do realize you could choose who you want to shoot your free throws, right? It felt like it felt like Jason Kidd went with Luca to shoot because he got fouled. Because even though Luke, even though Luca got a shot, I'm going with the hot hand with free throws. And the hot hand with, on free throws for the Dallas Mavericks his name is Tim Hardaway Jr. But Luca missed the two free throws, but then he made it up. How did he make it up? With the second clutch three point shot. He made that three point shot in overtime to that forced the game to go to a second overtime. I was just like. Yo, man, you could make you could make c- contested threes, but you can't make two free throws, at least one of those two free throws. You know, so I mean, it, some people just shoot better when, when it's pressure on them, I guess. Um, after the game was gonna be over, when in the first overtime when LeBron had the ball, and he. He drove in the lane, and I'm thinking he about to he about to go up and slam it on somebody, and probably get an air one or something. He did some some crazy some crazy lay layup attempt that wasn't even close. He's saying complained that the that 
that somebody fouled him and the ref didn't call it. I'm looking at the replay. I'm like, I'm like dude, I don't see a foul, man. Especially a foul, a foul worth calling in this at this stage of the game. Like, I don't see it. Now, now the the three pointer he shot. The three pointer he shot when there was a no call. Now that was a foul. That that was a foul. Actually, excuse me. That wasn't that wasn't LeBron. LeBron was complaining that the the layup attempt that would have ended the game in the first overtime was a foul. Now that wasn't a foul to me. Now it was actually Troy Brown Jr. who got fouled by who was supposed to have got fouled by Tim Hardaway Jr. I have no idea how the refs did not call that. It was it was a three point a three point foul. It 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 gave a chance for for Brown to try to make the the free throws to finish the game. He only needed one of those free throws. He would have got three. He he just needed one. Instead, no call. Game game goes in overtime, and I'm sitting on my couch like, what the hell? How you not call that? It was so clear that it was a foul. It was like, like, Russ should be fine for not making the right call in that situation. That's how clear it was to me. Cost the Lakers, cost the, Lakers the game. But then, but they close, they, they cause the game on themselves. LeBron doing, I don't know what, he he trying to do some crazy ass layup, man. You're LeBron James, man. Just go up on somebody. They're going to foul you, and you're going to get an and one or something. Slam on these dudes. Whatever happened to LeBron James with no regard to human life or, you know, whatever happened to that? That could have happened tonight. That could have happened tonight. Instead of doing some, some circus at layup and then complaining that he didn't get fouled, but after the second overtime, man, I, I guess it was just too much, too much for the Lakers. The, they must be getting, getting tired you know, or something. Um, Spencer, um, um, Denwitty was not letting this team lose this game. Don't get start, start start making some some cool shots and everything. You know, out of two overtimes, the leading score for. For the Lakers was Russell Westbrook at 28 points. That can't happen. That can't happen. That cannot happen. That makes me look at Anthony Davis and what's going to happen when he comes back. Because I'm looking at Win Yin. I I think that's how you say his name. Win Yin. First na- last name Gabriel. I'm looking at. Him in this game, the minutes he played in this game off the bench, the shooting percentage he did in this game, you know, and those 14 points and 7 rebounds. And I'm just looking, I'm just thinking to myself as I'm watching the game because he got some some good offensive rebounds to keep his his team in the game. I'm watching, I'm watching this game like, now what if Gabriel... Name was Davis. What would happen? What would happen then? That fourteen would have two fours, and it would have been forty-four. That seven rebounds, it would have had a one next to that seven. It would be like seventeen rebounds. You know, so that's that's going to help me with my first bold prediction. Today's episode. It's about bold predictions. And I'm going to make the first bold prediction right now. The Los Angeles Lakers will be in the play-in. And in this in the situation of a play-in when it's single elim- elimination, the Los Angeles Lakers will win in the play-in and they will be in the NBA playoffs come April. 